In this video, I'm building a garden bench and for materials, I'm going to be mostly using this old garden bench. If you work with salvaged materials as much as I do, you'll know that sometimes you strike gold and that is the case with this project. I know this bench doesn't look special, the joinery isn't the best, the frame is too thin, there's no rail to stop it racking, the bench seat isn't deep enough, it really needs three slats rather than two and that makes it uncomfortable, and it's all just held together with screws. But its secret beauty lies beneath years and years of weathering and dirt, because I'm pretty sure this right here is solid teak, which is very hard to come by. I didn't know that this could be teak at this stage, I assumed it might be Iroko, which is known as poor man's teak, and is much easier to come by. But more on that later. For now, I'm going to get these plugs removed and try to get the screws out. Although I didn't have much luck with that, one or two of them came out, but the others were so rusty that they snapped, so I'm going to just make a cut on the inside of where those screws are to retain as much length on these slats as possible. Fortunately, the bench was really quite long, so that extra length isn't really going to be missed. I wet the end grain to have another look, and still at this point I'm thinking this is probably Iroko. Surely it can't be real teak, right? I'm going to make a brand new frame for this bench, and I have some of this hardwood that I salvaged from an old church refurbishment many years ago. Some of you might remember that from my first ever vlog video. As you can see, these bits are a bit warped, so I need to mill these flat again using the planer first, and then the thicknesser. I chose these pieces because they're nice and wide so I can get the two long legs I need out of just this one workpiece with some careful laying out. And I'll have plans available for what I'm building here. If you'd like to make your own garden bench, links to those will be in the description box below. As you can see, both the legs and the backrest are going to be tapered. And this hardwood I think might be Maranti, which means it's durable enough for outdoor use, as Maranti is often used for exterior door and window frames. After cutting out the shapes at the bandsaw and mitre saw, I can work on making them identical, and I do that just by holding them together in the vise and using a hand plane to clean them up. I had these other small bits which I can use to make the other two legs. I'd already planed them to the same thickness, and I can mark up the shape from the legs that I'd already made. And I started marking out where my joinery will be, although you'll see that I need to change this later. The other wide piece I can use to make the rails, so first I need to rip it down in half at the table saw. And because these rails aren't as wide as I'd originally planned them to be, I need to mark up that joinery again. I'm just working with the materials that I've got to hand, so not everything is going to be as I had originally intended it. I'm going to be cutting the joinery using this flat toothed 6mm grooving blade. I'll leave a link to this in the description box below. And I set the blade height to halfway through the material, so that I can start cutting the half lap joinery using my mitre gauge to guide the cuts. I should have probably had an insert plate installed here to the table saw. To be honest, I didn't even realise I forgot to fit it until I was editing this footage. But with the type of cuts I'm making here, I didn't have any issues, fortunately. I'm going to need some more wood for the rails at the bottom of the leg frames. For these rails, rather than cut half laps, I decided I would just house them into the legs halfway, but keep the rails whole, as these rails will sit on the inside of the bench. And I'm going to add a bevel detail to what will be the inside face of the rails. 
I set up a bevel bit in the router table and I'm going to need to make this cut in about three passes to give me the depth that I want. So I raise the bit each time until eventually I have a nice chunky bevel. I wanted to get rid of that ridge at the top though, so a couple of passes through the thicknesser and then it was ready to fit. So I'm going to get the leg frames glued together using polyurethane glue, which is great for exterior use as it's fully waterproof and it's flexible, so in theory it can move along with the wood. And then I removed the excess glue and did some sanding just to clean everything up. I added a small round over detail just to ease over the sharp edges. And I'm going to treat everything with a couple of coats of wood preserver. It'll help protect the wood from insect damage and rot. Some of you will remember these old salvaged hardwood hat and coat stands which have featured in so many of my projects over the years and I think I can use this for the rails to span the length of the bench between the two leg frames. I just need to remove the old finish and then I can start setting things out. So originally I was thinking of having a brace at the bottom in the middle, something like that and also one at the top. But having thought about this a bit more, these boards are really thick, so I really don't think it needs any more structural integrity at the top. I think it just needs a brace at the bottom, so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll use the domino mortiser to fit this, so I can mark a center point and then cut two 25 millimeter deep mortises and get the dominoes glued in place to the rail. And then I need to carefully measure and mark up the corresponding mortises in the leg frames. I'm sure there must be a clever way to do this, probably involving some sort of jig, but I know that the bit in the domino is 10 millimeters from the base of the tool. So that's how I set out my lines, and then I can plunge cut and hope for the best. The domino is on its medium setting, so I'll have a little bit of side to side play. It's more the distance between the two dominoes that's the important part to get right here. Before fitting that rail, I'm also going to mill up and add a cleat that will later be used to secure the slats of the bench. And this just gets glued and screwed in place. And then I can add glue to the mortises and hope that the rail slots in nicely. Perfect. Now to work on milling up those slats, and this is where I realized that this could be teak. So I've been reading up online about the differences between Iroko and teak and apparently when you cut into or mill up a piece of teak it gives off a really leathery smell and that's the exact smell that's in the air of the workshop right now. So I really am starting to believe that what I have here is real teak but I'm sure some of you watching might know more about this than me so if you do please let me know down in the comments because I'm really keen to understand whether this is real teak or not. I eased over the sharp corners with a hand plane and then the slats are ready to fit. I've gone and bought a stain to apply to the frame of this bench for a few reasons. Firstly, the wood that I've used on the frame doesn't all match, it's not all the same species, so some of it is darker than others, and the stain will just make everything match a little bit nicer. Secondly, I don't think the golden colour of the teak is really going to look nice against the reddish colour of the hardwood frame. It does feel like a bit of a shame to be covering up the grain on this hardwood frame with a stain. <laughs> Sounds like I'm writing a poem but aesthetically I think it's going to look a lot nicer. Thirdly, this hardwood frame isn't going to be as durable as the teak because teak is pretty much as good as you can get. So the frame could do with a little bit of extra protection to hopefully make it last just like the teak will. And finally, because I've used half lap joinery and the pieces are running perpendicular to each other, I think it's a good idea to limit the amount of expansion and contraction the wood can do as much as possible and sealing it up with a stain is definitely going to help that because it's going to absorb less moisture.
I was very pleasantly surprised by this stain. I liked the colour of it and I liked how translucent it was. The Ron Seal stain that I've used in the past, like when I built this exterior door for my mum and dad a few months back, didn't really show the grain of the wood enough and it was a nasty colour too, whereas this stuff was a nice golden brown colour and it really brought out the grain nicely. I denibbed with some 400 grit and then added a second coat. And to protect the end grain from sucking up moisture from the floor, I'm also going to add some plastic feet to the bottom of the legs. So you might remember at the start of this video there were only four slats on the original bench and I really wanted to add another to make the seat deeper. I do have some Iroko boards in storage but they weren't thick enough and also they weren't really a good match for the teak, or what I believe could be teak I should say. I did have some rough sawn Iroko too which was a little bit thicker, so I pulled that out and planed it down and the colour of the board appeared to be a much better match. It wasn't identical but it was probably going to be my best option. So I ran it through the planer and this time I didn't get that leathery smell and when it came out it looked like it'd be about as close a match as I could have ever hoped for so I was pleased with that. And I'll use this piece as a backrest slat and off camera I could mill down one of the boards that I believe is teak to the same thickness. I can now cut clean ends onto all of the slats and hey presto, I now have everything I need to get the slats fitted. Before I do that though, I'm going to add finish and for that I'm going to use teak oil. This stuff is really thin, which is perfect for this wood because it's naturally very oily. So the thinness of the oil will help it to soak in. It might have been a good idea to thin it down even more with some white spirit, but I didn't do that and it seemed to work just fine. I gave it three coats in total. And now to fit the slats I can start carefully measuring and marking up where I want my holes, making sure that all of the fittings will be equally spaced on the slats. I've got some of these M8 bolts to fit the slats, and it's just a case of positioning them where I want them, drilling the holes, and adding the nuts and washers. Then I can fit more cleats to support the backrest slats and fit those in the same way. When everything was assembled I gave it one last coat of oil. And that's it done and it's pretty comfortable to sit on. And here's a picture of the bench in its final home in my mum and dad's garden. As I mentioned earlier, I'll have plans available for this project. There'll be a link in the description box below. Thanks for watching.